All right, with this forecast video update on this Friday, June the 25th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you guys had a wonderful day. And I have to say, it's been really, yet again, another soggy day across central Florida where most of us saw some showers and even a few thunderstorms. And some did produce some heavy rain as well. And we're still seeing that right now on the radar this evening. But I do expect some more wet weather to move our way as we head into this final weekend of June and also possibly into next week. We'll look at that uh, here in just a little bit as far as our forecasts go in the next uh, coming days. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now on the radar and see where the rain is, where it is exactly here in central Florida. And as you can see here, that most of the rain, most of the rain right now is, again, in the same areas like it was over the past few nights, including last night, along and west of I-4. But right now the heaviest looks, looks to be down over in Osceola County, uh, just uh, over near Kissimmee, where already the Weather Service has prompted a flood advisory, uh, just not that too long ago. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's see what the information is uh, for. Oop. Uh, the, I just actually pushed the wrong button. <laughs> so let's take a look. So let's take a look at the information about the flood advisory uh, that I was going to say for uh, Osceola County. And, and according to the Weather Service, it looks like a flood advisory is in effect for the northwestern part of Osceola County now until 8.30 this evening, so for the next uh, 30 minutes. And according to the Weather Service, uh, they've indicated heavy rain due to stationary storms. And, of course, there's a possibility of some minor flooding uh, in the advisory area. And already, between two to two and a half inches of rain has already fallen near Celebration and Intercession City. And, of course, you can see these storms are still moving from the southeast to the north and west, still pretty slow at 30 to 35 miles per hour. So remember, if you're driving, remember to not drive your cars into an area, especially whichever road that could be in, uh, where the water is covering the road, because you won't be able to tell how deep the water is. So that's why, we all been, that's why we've been saying many times, you turn around and don't drown. So... <clears throat> So yeah, so let's go ahead and zoom in a little tighter here and show you where the heaviest rain is right now. Again, this is just to the west of Kissimmee, and we have another batch right here just to the west of uh, Lake Tohopa. I'm going to butcher this name here. Uh, Lake Tohopakalaga? I don't know. But it's, it's, basically, it's basically just uh, between the lake and Kissimmee. Is where the heavier showers are at right now, but also we have some heavy rain again uh, that is re uh, redeveloping right here near Point Siena in the Celebration uh, communities, and it looks like this could be heading up towards uh, Disney uh, pretty soon. And I have to say, Disney did see some on and off showers uh, earlier today, and of course, seen and of course right now, as you see here on the radar. So, so just uh, keep that in mind. But, but as far as the lightning goes with these uh, tropical downpours, let's go ahead and turn on the lightning and show you if there's any. And it looks like I don't see any. Well, let me try it again because I'm sure there should be lightning uh, with the with these uh, downpours. Hmm. All right, all right, all right, there we go. Not sure why it uh, took a, took a little bit long to load up, but but, there, but there's the lightning. Not over here in Osceola County, but we have some, but there's a little bit of lightning right here uh, near Lakeland, where there's some heavier showers uh, developing as well. But I know some of these tropical downpours did produce thunder and lightning uh, just uh, earlier. But especially, but especially right here in Osceola County, uh, I bet there were some earlier, but I don't see any of that uh, currently on the lightning counter of the radar. So as I turn, turn that off, we'll go ahead and zoom back in and do some tracking with these uh, heavier showers. Again this, is, again, this is all moving due to the northwest here at uh, 30 to 35 miles per hour. So uh, we'll put this here uh, right, right, right about there. So at 35 miles per hour, okay, doesn't show a whole lot, of, doesn't show any cities here. So I'm gonna, I'll put another track a little bit tighter. Still nothing. Well, 
Anyway, well, anyways, uh, and if you if you still live uh, close to Disney, like near 429 and near the property, uh, just be aware that there'll be another batch of some heavier showers that can move in uh, in the next uh, about five, about, about, about uh, five to ten, uh, ten minutes or so. So just be aware of that. And as I put a track with this other batch right here that is just south of downtown Kissimmee, again, it's moving to the same direction, moving due northwest. Uh, at 35 miles per hour, so that will be uh, uh, that could affect uh, possibly Intercession City and Celebration in just a little bit. So, so if you live in these areas, uh, you may want to be on high alert that there could be another batch of uh, another batch of heavy rain that could move in uh, in just uh, again in a matter of minutes. But as I fix the uh, storm track, since it's 8:05. It looks like Intercession City. You may see some. You may see another batch of heavy showers at about eight fourteen, in celebration at eight twenty two. So, any of these areas that I called out again, just just uh, know that round two of heavy of heavier showers that is south, that is south of downtown Kissimmee will move into your direction. So that's why again a flood of ice tree is in effect until eight thirty this evening. But uh, as we zoom out the big picture, just a bit. Again, it's not just Osceola County that are, that are seeing heavier showers right now, but there's also, like I said just a, little, just a few minutes ago, there are some more heavier showers that are developing uh, right here in and around the city of Lakeland. And it's basically just between I-4, as we go in a little bit tighter, so between I-4 and uh, Kathleen Road is where there, there are heavier showers right now. This is just to the west of the downtown Lakeland area, and also Polk, uh, Polk Parkway is getting poured by heavy rain too, and the same thing for the 570 corridor, which I believe is the turnpike, if I'm if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And again, it's still continuing to move from the from the southeast to the north and west at uh, 30 to 35 miles per hour. But uh, it's not just Polk and Osceola counties that are seeing heavier showers too, but there's also more rain developing right here in the southern part of the county, just uh, to the north of Lake Kissimmee. And there's also some more scattered showers right here in the western side of Orange County. So, so it's not just uh, Disney, uh, Disney, but there's also some showers around Windermere, west of downtown Orlando, and right near the Orlando International Airport. And there's also more scattered to light to moderate showers over in Lake County, including Claremont and Leesburg, and right along Highway 50. So some moderate showers there too. And there's also some moderate showers that are here in, in the Bushnell community, just uh, uh which is located in the southern part of Sumter County as well. All right. <clears throat> and as we go to the northeast just a little bit, there's also some more scattered showers happening right now in Volusia County. Uh, just uh, between Deltona and Deland is where the showers are happening right now. But, and there's also more rain along 44 just between Deland and New Smyrna Beach. And again, it's moving to the same direction, moving south from southeast to the northwest at 35 to 40 miles per hour. And earlier this afternoon, there's been some heavier rain over in, over near Port Orange and, and, and the uh, Daytona Beach areas in Volusia County where uh, where the Weather Service did prompt uh, to issue a flood advisory. And there, and there have been some reports of some minor flooding over near the Port Orange area. And according to a train spotter, this is just around 3 o'clock this afternoon, a, a storm spotter to report of roadways uh, covered with water with cars stalled on South Williamson Boulevard, south of Taylor Road and Port Orange. And also, the spotter also measured three inches of rain uh, from these uh, heavier showers and storms that developed again earlier today. But look at this. Just four miles south of southwest of Port Orange, a, sp a storm spotter reported uh, 6.25 inches of rain on Cypress Pond Road. And a nearby weather station has reported about around 7.28 inches of rain. So that was a whole lot of rain that Volusia County got uh, this afternoon. And again, that's why they've uh, issued that flood advisory, because of some heavy rain that developed uh, over in parts of the county, between just between Daytona and Port Orange. But as we uh, zoom out just a little bit, there, it's not just uh, Volusia County as well, but there's also some more wet weather activity happening in Marion County. So we got, we got some scattered showers right now in Ocala, and there's also some scattered showers in Palm Coast. Again, all these rain showers and a few tr uh, tropical downpours are moving from southeast to the northwest, uh, at least for the rest of this evening, at about uh, 30 to 35 miles per hour. And I forgot to mention about uh, the southern part of Brevard County, too. Just near Palm Bay, there's also some more uh, tropical downpours developing, too. All right, so how much rain some of you have seen today? Well, as we go ahead and take a look at the rainfall total 
uh, tracker. I'll show you who got some uh, pretty good totals today. And as we zoom in to back into Volusia County, because again, that's where the most heavier rain has developed this afternoon. And as we zoom in a little bit closer uh, towards the Port Orange community, uh, seems like uh, near I-95 and uh, Cypress Pond Road, it looks like this little area in red has picked up, like I said, between four and a half to even close to five inches of rain from the, from these uh, thunder showers that developed earlier today. So that's a whole lot of rain, again, that uh, the western side of Port Orange had got had gotten this afternoon. And as we zoom out again, as we zoom to, as we uh, are pan to the south just a little bit, uh, it looks like uh, anywhere from near the southeastern side of Volusia County, it looks like this little area has picked up about two to two and a half inches of rain from these uh, tropical downpours today too. And then a little farther south to go into near at least east of Bithlow in northeastern Orange County, and also near the Seminole County line, it looks like uh, it looks like already up to three inches of rain has been received this afternoon too. But there's been so, there's been a little bit of, a little bit of some heavy rain that developed earlier today in the southern part of Orange County, where uh, between between the Orlando International Airport and SeaWorld, uh, it looks like uh, looks like this area has picked up uh, close to four inches of rain. Uh, earlier today, so that's that's pretty that's a pretty good amount uh, too. And farther northwest you go into at least west of Apopka, it looks like uh, almost almost close to three inches of rain has already fallen uh, in that uh, area too. But in Claremont over in Lake County, look at this here, already up to three to three and a half inches of rain has been received too in the city. But right now, where the flood advisory is currently in effect for at least the next twenty five minutes in the northwestern part of Osceola County, it looks like, again, your celebration. And around Intercession City has picked up already between three to three and a half inches of accumulating rainfall from, at least with these uh, downpours that continue to fall at this hour. But I have to say the northern Polk County did see some pretty good totals too today. Look at this here, just to the north of Winter Haven, where you see the, this uh, darker orange color. So it does indicate that uh, this area has picked up close to four inches of rain uh, today too. So yeah, so localized places did get some pretty good totals today of heavy rain. And it's not just uh, these areas here, but also there's been more localized reports of heavy rain today, like right over towards southeastern Polk County, where already up to three inches of rain has already been fallen there. And then as we pan up to the north, it looks like the northeastern side of Marion County, just near Anthony, has reported uh, already up to three and a half inches of heavy rain today, too. So... So yeah, we've been seeing that here over the past several days, including today. So let's go ahead and turn this off, and we'll go ahead and uh, take a look. We'll go ahead and take a look at the future cast and show you uh, who could see more rain for tomorrow, and also who could see more rain also as we head into Sunday. And by the way, the rain chances on Sunday will not be quite as high like we've seen this week and like we're going to see again for tomorrow. So just just so just remember that if you can. But before we do that, as usual, like a bit like a do like I do every night, if you're just uh, coming into Facebook Live on this Friday evening, remember I don't mind if you could go ahead and share this video to your Facebook followers because you know my motto, sharing is caring. And before we also move on, I'm going to go ahead and share this feed to one of my other live Facebook pages. So Again, hang on just a minute, and we will definitely move on to what's going to be happening here for the next couple of days, most, mostly uh, this weekend in Central Florida. All right, so here we go. 
So as we take a look at uh, future cast, so handing into about about the next uh, hour or so, so about 9 o'clock, we'll still see some showers left over along with a few tropical downpours, again, for areas along and west of I-4. And then as we head towards the overnight, we'll see things looking quiet, but can't rule out maybe a few isolated one or two spotty showers, especially north of Orlando, but other than that, it'll just be mostly quiet. Uh, again, as we head into the overnight uh, hours late tonight and perhaps into early tomorrow morning. So as we start off our weekend, so tomorrow morning at, at 7, it looks like we'll wake up to another good star. could be a little bit cloudy, but maybe a few peaks of sun possible. And then as we head towards the later part of the day, once again, we'll see another batch of showers and storms develop again uh, like we saw today, moving from southeast to the north and west here in central Florida. So this is 1 o'clock. It looks like some showers and tropical downpours could develop, especially in the northwestern half of Orange County, so near Apopka to, let's say, near Okoe, back down towards Lake Kissimmee and south of Lakeland, there could be some storms that could form as we head towards 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And remember, it's not going to be a washout, so don't cancel any plans you have tomorrow or Sunday because these storms are hit or miss, and it's not going to be lasting all day long. But just have the ponchos handy once the rain does develop or whatever you are. And then as we head towards 3 and 4, it looks like most of these uh, isolated showers and storms will push off towards the western half of central Florida. So near uh, Ocala to, let's say, south of the villages and north of Lakeland, is where that's where the most of the showers will be happening as we head towards Saturday. But it looks like we may get a bit of a break for Orlando and other, and other places around that hour. And then as we head towards 6 and 7... Uh, looks like your evening plans should your evening plans should be pretty good. So if you got anything going on tomorrow evening outdoors, you should be fine. And then and the same thing also as we head towards late tomorrow night. So if, we, if you're going to be up late outdoors, you should be fine as well. But as we head towards the overnight hours, late tomorrow night into early Sunday morning, again we'll see another good start there with the uh, uh, morning glow temperatures in the 70s. And by the way, the highs tomorrow will be in the upper 80s to about 90. Uh, so just Note that, too. But, yeah, we'll see 70s for lows early Sunday morning, and it could, there could be maybe just a few, one or two isolated pop-up showers along the coast of I-95. But other than that, it'll just be another quiet start to the day on your Sunday, at least for the morning hours. And then as we head towards the afternoon, again, I've said this a few minutes ago, the rain chances will not be quite as high like we have seen this week and like we're in even even the same thing again tomorrow. So we're going to call for about a 20 to a 30% coverage of some rain as we head towards Sunday, but could be a few spotty showers possible, again, for areas along and west of I-4. So it looks like Sunday should be a pretty good day to uh, get outside because we'll see at least some breaks from the rain after, we, after we've seen a pretty much a wet work week this week. And then here Sunday night, it looks like, again, it could be a few leftover spotty showers in some spotty areas. And then as the clock ends towards 2 a.m. early Monday to kick off another another work week, uh, we'll be starting off dry. So, once again, how much you could see as far as rain goes uh, in central Florida for the next uh, couple of days. Well, here's a look at the precipitation accumulation product on Futurecast. And it should, and it should get it just, it should get, it should... Uh, it should give it a second uh, to uh, load it up, so just be patient. Try this again. Oh, there it went. All right, so this again, this does carry all the way through early Monday morning. So as far as the rain totals go here for the next few days, it looks like uh, looks like the totals will be much lower. But some localized spots could see maybe a bit of some higher totals, like over here in Sumter County. Uh, looks like you folks could see maybe still between two to four inches of rain in the next 48 hours, but others will see less totals. So anywhere from greens and blues indicates that you folks could see about a half to maybe some localized places, about an inch of rain possible as we head into both tomorrow and Sunday. So there you pretty much folks have it. All right, so before we get into the GFS, let's get one more look at the radar and see what's going on once again here in Central Florida, because for those of you, once again, that are just coming into Facebook Live, if you missed it here at the beginning of this feed, here it is again. And again, the only thing we're seeing here is some, still some showers. And again, the heaviest uh, 
is basically, again, in Osceola County where a flood advisory is in effect, again, for the next uh, uh, 10 minutes or so. That is until 8.30, and as you can see, there's still more heavier showers developing in that advisory area uh, around Intercession City and just to the south of Celebration. And again, this could potentially head towards Disney in just a little bit. <clears throat> but again, and again, I'm going to go ahead and turn, turn, turn on the uh, lightning because it's not just the heavy rain that is uh, a, a concern, but also there's some lightning and some thunder, too. And as I turn on, turn on the lightning counter, and this time it does show, uh, show some lightning on the radar, especially with the with these heavier showers in, in Osceola County and also with these uh, lighter showers over here in Orange County. So a little bit of thunder and lightning near Dr. Phillips and over near the airport and over near Disney. And there's also a little bit of, a little bit of lightning over near Clermont as well with these uh, lighter showers. And there's also some more of that here back into the northern half of Lakeland and Polk County. So... That's uh, pretty much it. Not a big ton of lightning, but there is some lightning strikes uh, with these showers, whether it's light or heavy. And again, they will continue here until they dissipate by around overnight tonight. And and, and once again, it's not just uh, Osceola County that are seen that are seeing heavier showers right now, but there's also some more showers, heavier showers that is. Again, over here just to the north and west of Lakeland as these, again, continues to move from southeast to the north and west at 30 to 35 miles per hour. And there's some more, at least there's some more showers as we pan over to the east here in parts of Osceola County, one over towards the eastern half of the county and one just near Lake Kissimmee. And there's another batch right here uh, just to the south of the Palm Bay community in southern Brevard County. And as I wind up, and as I wind up the big picture again, there's also more showers over in Volusia County, just uh, south or west and southwest of Daytona Beach, and some more of that in Lake and Sumter, and perhaps Flagler and Marion counties. So they will continue again for at least a few hours this evening, and then they will pretty much, you know, be done with as we head towards the rest of tonight before another round moves in tomorrow. So there you have it there. All right, so now to the GFS. So let's so let's begin with Monday of early next week. And right now, according to the GFS, it looks like there could be some rain that may stay over towards the I-95 corridor. So anywhere from near Flagler, Volusia, and Brevard counties, we'll call for maybe about a 40% chance for maybe some showers and tropical downpours as we head towards that day. But it shows not a whole lot of rain in our inland areas. So... We'll have to wait and see, but I still think we could we could see some more rain in some areas of central Florida as we head towards Monday. So something to watch closely. And as we take a look at those high temperatures, as you can see, it will heat up into the low 90s as we head into that day. So, yep, it will be uh, a little bit hotter to end the month of June. And it's not just for here in central Florida that we'll see temperatures in the 90s, but also the same thing farther north you go into the Mississippi Valley. Now, what about Tuesday of next week? This is the 29th, and as you can see on the GFS, it shows still not a whole lot of rain for Central Florida, but I think those, there still could be some possibility for, for maybe some showers and late-day storms uh, during the day on Tuesday. So we'll call for maybe another 30 to a 40% coverage if that is the case. So we'll have to wait and see what happens then. And again, temperature-wise, we'll still be look, we'll still look most, mostly the same with highs in the 90s for all of us across Central Florida and even the same story for folks in South Georgia and parts of the Mississippi and Alabama states too. But there'll be there'll be some rain possibility uh, possible uh, that could briefly help temperatures cool down a little bit into the 70s and 80s once the rain does develop. Now heading into the middle of the work week, which is Wednesday the 30th, and still according to the GFS, it doesn't show a whole lot of rain uh, on this run. And by the way, Wednesday will be the last day of June. So we'll call for another, again, 30 to a 40 percent coverage of some rain and a few storms in parts of central Florida. But right now, according to the GFS, the biggest chances are going to stay mostly north across the Mississippi Valley, if, if, that, is, if that appears to be the case. And still, again, the, the, the temperatures will still be in the above average category. So we're still, we're still talking about more heat and humidity with 80s and 90s all across most of the Sunshine State, and the same thing across parts of Georgia, South Alabama, and South Carolina. 
uh, with the rain and the thunderstorm chances that will stay high up towards the Mississippi Valley region on Wednesday. Again, that's going to keep temperatures a little bit cooler, briefly cool, that is, in the 70s and 80s. All right, now here is next Thursday, the first day of July. And right now, the rain chances for that day looks to increase again, this time focusing just west of I-4, so anywhere from near Ocala, the villages, Claremont, Wildwood, Bushnell, Lakeland, Winter Haven, it looks like it could be just about a 50% coverage, we'll say, for maybe some scattered late-day showers and storms. Others will see just a very low 30% coverage. So that is on Thursday of next week to kick off the new month of July. And there'll be a, a better chance uh, from the north you go into the panhandle of Florida, southern Alabama, and southwest Georgia, where the rain chances will be will boost up to about a 60% coverage if that is the case. And here's a look at those high temperatures that day. And still, the heat will still be around with highs in the low to mid-90s across the entire peninsula. And the same story for our friends up to the north in the Mississippi Valley. But it looks like next Friday, which is a week from today, July 2nd, shows the rain chances will continue to increase even more. So we're talking about maybe just a 50, perhaps a 60% coverage of more showers and storms to return as we head towards the end of the work week next week and as we get close to the 4th of July holiday weekend. <clears throat> so that so that could potentially affect your plans for that day if that is the case. But if you notice here on the GFS far the north you go across central portions of Alabama and Mississippi, there could be some pretty decent uh you know, better rain chances, I guess you can say, as we head towards that day. And some could be heavy at times, if uh, if that is correct. And as we look at those high temperatures, and it looks like for here, we'll still be looking to stay mainly hot and humid with 90s. But again, once the rain develops, that could, you know, help temperatures cool down a little bit into the 80s. But look at Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. That could be a cold front that could try to, uh, that could try to dive in in that region that could allow temperatures to cool down into the mid 70s but i know it will not be approaching central florida because you know we don't see any more cold fronts coming through in the summertime here in the state so it won't return until this fall now here is a week from tomorrow that's the that's uh, Saturday, July third, uh, the first half of the Fourth of July holiday weekend, and right now it looks like the rain chances will decrease just a little bit, but uh, still there'll be some rain in some areas. Right now, the better chances here will be will be staying again mainly east of I four, so anywhere from Daytona Beach to New Smyrna and Melbourne could see a better chance for showers and storms, and about a thirty percent coverage inland of isolated showers and storms. If that is the case, but still the better rain chances will stay mainly north and around the panhandle of Florida in the lower uh, sections of the Mississippi Valley. And uh, as we take a look at those high temperatures, and again for us, the heat will still be around with highs in the 90s, especially all across the peninsula, but with the better rain chances that will happen across the lower sections of the Mississippi Valley, including the panhandle of Florida. Again, that could help temperatures cool down just a little bit into the 70s and 80s. And remember, it's not going to be a total washout if you got any plans on next Saturday to kick off the holiday weekend. So just just remember that uh, as well. All right, what about the actual holiday? This is next Sunday, the 4th of July holiday, and it looks like we'll still see some more scattered pop-up showers and storms here in central Florida. So we'll give it about a 40% chance uh, of of that, if that is the case, right now the better chances here, uh, the better chances I should say will be will be mainly down in South Florida, where there could be some possible heavy rain across Miami and West Palm Beach, where totals could add up between two to four inches. But we'll have to wait and see. But again, I don't think it's going to be lasting all day long, and I'm hoping that the rain will be gone un until by the time the fireworks begin on Sunday night of next weekend. So just keep your fingers crossed. But of course, I'll still keep you posted. Because changes, changes can still be made as we get closer to the holiday. And temperature-wise on the holiday, it looks to stay more of the same, keeping uh, highs in the 90s, possibly heat index temperatures in the triple digits, and even the heat will kick back up again across the Mississippi Valley with 80s and 90s to return. All 
All right, now heading into Monday, July 5th. So after our holiday weekend ends, it looks like we'll see the rain chances continue to stay between average to below average, uh, if that is the case. So we'll call for, again, another th- another 30 to a 40% coverage of some late-day showers and thunderstorms. But right now, the better chances will stay, again, just to the north in Alabama and Mississippi and points west with a, uh, also a better chance uh, down in south Florida. So chances will be average here in, this, in the viewing area. And again, temperatures will still remain hot and muggy with more in the way, again, of low to mid 90s across the entire state. And the same story for the north to go into Georgia and South Carolina. But where the better rain chances will continue uh, on that day, will keep temperatures cooler from Alabama and points west, at least the southern part of those states, in the 70s and 80s. All right, as we enter the land of voodoo country, this is taking you to Tuesday, July 6th, and it looks like the rain chances will continue to go back up again. So we're talking maybe just another 50 to perhaps a 60% coverage of late-day showers and storms likely, especially all across the entire peninsula. So that's something we'll watch, but again, that could change as we get closer. Temperature-wise, otherwise, looks to stay more of the same, keeping mostly in the way of of hot and humid conditions with 90s inland and maybe some upper 80s to near 90 along the I-95 corridor. And the same story a little bit farther north you go into the lower sections of the Mississippi Valley. Now, here is Wednesday, July 7th, and even more more bands of rain could still happen here in the state. So it looks like the rain chances will go up to about a 70% coverage for now, if that is the case. So that's something we'll also keep an eye out, but again, it's just it's just too early to tell. Some could produce maybe locally heavy rain too. And look at these temperatures uh, on the seventh, with these uh, better chances of uh, with these uh, better chances of showers and storms. That could you know bring temperatures a little cooler into the uh, 70s and maybe close to 80s. So that could be pretty good. But if you go farther to the north and west in the southwestern sections of Alabama and Mississippi, still the hottest weather continues with high temperatures in the 90s with heat index values in the triple digits. And here is two weeks from yesterday, from yesterday that is Thursday, July 8th, and it looks like the rain chances will again decrease a bit, but still could be some scattered chances in and around portions of our viewing area with some heavier rain down in south Florida. So we'll have to see what happens by then, but, you know, things could change. And temperatures will start to heat back up again with 80s to about low 90s across the entire state with some uh, cooler temperatures in South Florida where there'll, be some, where, there'll be, where, where there'll be some heavier rain possible. And still the mid-90s the mid will stick around across the northern se- or the northern and western sections of Alabama and Mississippi on that day too. So, again... It's just too early to tell, so we'll have to wait and see what happens as we get close to the first full week of the new month. So that's why I called it the Land of Voodoo. All right, heading into two weeks from today, and that is Friday, July 9th, and still the rain continues to remain scattered at about a 50%. So we'll see normally what we see in the summertime, just more of the wet weather as we're in wet season. And also some more wet weather will happen across Alabama as well. Temperature-wise, otherwise, looks to stay more of the same. Again, with highs in the 80s and 90s. And the same story also for our friends up in the Mississippi Valley region. Now, here is two weeks from tomorrow. That is Saturday, July 10th, and right now, according to the GFS, still the rain continues to be hanging around in central Florida with maybe some locally heavier amounts uh, over towards the west of I-4. So we'll call it for another 50% coverage of of more uh, rain and storms here in our state, and the same thing for the lower sections of the Mississippi Valley. And our temperatures, again, remains pretty much the same. Still looking to stay pretty hot and muggy with highs in the mid to maybe even upper 90s, possibly, as we head towards that day. And that could be the same thing also over towards near Savannah, Georgia, and up towards South Carolina. And last but not least is Sunday, July 11th, and the rain chances will continue to decrease. 
this time to about a 30 to a 40 percent chance uh, here in central Florida with a better chance uh, up towards mostly Alabama, Georgia and Mississippi. Again, if that appears to be the case. And our high temperatures finally down below will still be looking again to remain pretty hot with 90s all across the uh, Sunshine State and the same thing for the rest of the southeast. So there you folks have it. All right, gang, I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping up this Facebook live feed on this Friday evening. So I expect to have the next uh, update starting on Monday, early next week, same time between 8 and 830. And I will continue as usual by posting my notes or updates on my blog and social media pages 24 seven. But in the meantime, hope you all enjoy your final weekend of June and remember to stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you once again Monday night. And God bless to you all, too.